Thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, can, can you beat Oprah, by the way? Yeah, I'll beat Oprah. Oprah would be a lot of fun. I know her very well. You know, I did one of her last shows. She had Donald Trump, this is before politics, her last week. And she had Donald Trump, and my family was very nice. No, I like Oprah. I don't think she's going to run. I don't think she's going to run. I know her very well. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. President. Let's wait a for the press to meet. Joining us now with Reaction, we have the host of Michelle Malkin Investigates, CRTV Michelle Malkin, former White House Press Secretary Sean Spicer. You know, it was 2009, Michelle, when they're right, you know, many are signing a petition for Roman Polanski. You saw the roar and the standing ovation. I think what Oprah said is right. I think she's dead on. I have faith in her. I don't have faith in all these people racing for the next savior. Well, as the, in the clip that you just showed, uh, among the people who leapt to their feet for Roman Polanski were hypocrite Meryl Streep and, of course, now accused multiple predator Harvey Weinstein. And I have to disagree with you slightly, Sean, because as much as I've heard so much By the way, so we've been positive, family for years. You go right ahead. Did, everyone so else, can, what do you hear tonight's right, Hannity hate mail? Go ahead. <laughs> That's right. Uh, we, yeah, so... Uh, I do not join in all of the the uh, effusive praise for Oprah's speech last night. I thought it was textbook, partisan, uh, and ideological identity liberalism. And she herself is one who has been accused by um, multiple victims of Harvey Weinstein of being a fixer for Harvey Weinstein. There are many infamous pictures of her I've seen the pictures. hanging off of, but did, of but Weinstein. Did, but it, you have to be fair. She, did she know? We don't know if she knew. Well, A lot of know, people have taken pictures with me and you over the years. We don't know them. No question about it, but the uh, consensus from so many of the people who have been complaining about Harvey Weinstein for years and been ignored is that, quote unquote, everybody knew. Meryl Streep knew, and many people believe that Oprah Winfrey knew as well. So, look, the idea that uh, Hollywood and Democrat uh, strategists think somehow that Oprah Winfrey has a chance in 2020 and that she's allowing all of this buzz to happen. Uh, she has her boyfriend, Stedman, uh, cheering on uh, all of the gossip about uh, a potential run. What would we get? We'd get another eight years of the same kind of Chicago machine identity liberalism that we got under Barack Obama, who uh, has, in, in part, so large uh, a role uh, of Oprah Winfrey to thank for getting to him, getting him where he was. And and last night, all of Hollywood and, and Oprah were pretending as if the last eight years of the Obama administration didn't happen. And, and, and that's to me, I think, w what's most troubling: the unreality of the people you in know, the Hollywood bubble. Sean, I guess the difference. I I go back. I I felt in many ways between vetting Obama and Reverend Wright and black liberation theology and Dorns and Ayers and Acorn and Alinsky and Frank Marshall Davis, I felt there were a few of us. Michelle, I know, was one. Um, and, and there were a few of us that vetted him. And then after eight years, there were very few of us that talked about what? We had 13 million more Americans on food stamps, 8 million more in poverty, the lowest labor participation rate since the 70s, worst recovery since the 40s, lowest home ownership rate in 51 years, and we doubled the debt, and he gave Iran $150 billion. So truth and facts and substance matters, but I kind of feel I was alone here in a lot of ways. I had Michelle, was like family to me, by my side and a few others. That's about it. So why the rush for a savior again when the last savior they chose failed so miserably? Well, look, I think the thing that's interesting is that what Oprah said last night, all Americans should agree with, and, and I, I agree with you, uh, that respecting women, creating a safe work environment for all individuals is something that we should all agree on. It should be beyond politics. It should be beyond uh, ideology. It should be something that every American and every human supports. Uh, that being said, 
I think that the interesting thing last night is she didn't talk about policy. She didn't talk about how to solve some of the more controversial issues. And to your point right now, I mean, they're about to coronate somebody who gave a speech on, frankly, something that not only should we all agree on, but something that you aptly point out is highly hypocritical well, for way, most of the people did, in that room. They uh, did. Where, that, where, I mean, Sean, it's not just Roman Polanski. It's, it's Bill Clinton. It's others who, when they're point. given an opportunity to speak Checkmate. out, they overlooked it. They, they did more. You know, you had to sit in a room. I don't know how the hell you did your job for as long as you did. And I noticed in an interview with SE Cup, you were kind of hard on yourself. And I'm thinking, you know, you really didn't do that much wrong because they were so hostile. I can't think of a moment they've given Trump a break. And they gave Obama every break. Oh, God. both before, during and after. <laughs> What's your experience Even with the, the press? Center, uh, the Oh, it, it, I mean, look, I, I had known a lot of these guys for, for sometimes, in some cases, more than two decades. I think there was unbelievably a, a massive hostile, hostility never seen before. And the Pew Center backed it up. 63% of the coverage against President Trump was negative, only 5% positive, which is three times what that was of Obama. I mean, they came out guns ablazing in the mainstream media. Uh, they, were, they were upset that they were wrong, and they were going to take it out on their coverage. All right, last word, Michelle. Well, I, I think that Hollywood and the Democrats need to put down the Oprah bong and stop inhaling. And I think probably the reason why they're so desperate is if you look at the current field of Democrat potential candidates for 2020, you've got the pretendian Elizabeth Warren. You've got uh, Bernie Sanders, who will be 79. Uh, Maxine Waters, who's cast as the fresh face of the Democrat Party. No wonder they're grasping for the straw of Oprah Winfrey. All right, guys. Good to see you. I uh, appreciate you both being with us.